I often say to people there's three main important aspects to suspension. Suspension travel, the springs are the second part, and the third one's the valving. Can you just explain the basic structure of the inside of a damper and how it works? So one of the main components is the piston. The piston's essentially a disc uh, with a certain thickness, maybe you know, 10, 15 mil thereabouts, depending on the shock. And there's holes in that piston that allow oil to flow uh, in both directions. So then on either side of that piston, there's thin metal discs. So they're usually range of thicknesses like uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25 uh, and, and upwards sort of thing. So how you stack those discs, those discs on top of the each side of the piston is what changes the characteristics of the shock, how soft and hard it is. It's quite complex how those shims react to the different sort of shaft speeds and all flow and that sort of stuff. It takes a lot of time to get your head around it, start to understand it and know what effects certain changes you know should make. You can sort of play around with dyno a fair bit and try and learn from that and that definitely helps but I find that real world testing is the best way to do it because sometimes you can make a change that a dynograph will barely show you but you can feel it as a driver when you drive the car even if it's just something simple like going down the road and it's a comfort sort of thing or if you're out on the racetrack and it's a performance sort of thing. So that uh, stack of discs or shims is that is a different area of adjustment to the rebound and compression adjustment. Yes, so yeah, that's a different thing. So that adjuster on the outside of the shock, that affects some free flowing oil within the shock that actually bypasses that piston and shim stack. So the way that that adjuster works is it's essentially, I describe it to people a bit like a water tap, it's essentially just a valve and the tighter you have it, the more restricted the flow is and the uh, the more open you have it, the, the easier the shock flows. In that case, the tighter you have it, the stiffer the shock feels and the more the oil can flow, the softer the shock feels. So that is hydraulic fluid that is bypassing the shim stack so at what point is it actually moving through the shim stack generally speaking the that adjustment is the easiest path for the oil to take so that's where it will flow first so that's what we call sort of low shaft speed movement so that's general sort of general comfort down the road that'll make a big difference general sort of uh, just braking cornering uh, you know uh, uh, throttle application that sort of stuff those sorts of areas you'll feel that sort of difference you'll feel valving within that as well but that's sort of where the adjusters it's most powerful and then the valving itself different amounts of shims different thicknesses could you have for example uh, two thinner shims or one thicker shim are you going to feel a significant difference between a setup like that? Yeah definitely so I, I find that um, we use a lot more shims and uh, like thinner and more of shims rather than sort of less and thicker shims say for example if you take a 1.2 shim or 2.1 shims we prefer the 2.1 shims feel and we find that that's better for general compliance um, over bumps and things like that I find that the less shims but thicker can be a little bit crude and whilst you might get the performance you want out of it you might be sacrificing some comfort uh, some compliance over bumps and things like that. And does that give you in the development stage more kind of tunability with a, a bigger amount of shims you can make smaller steps? Yep. So by having more shims in the stack, you've you've created more points that you can change uh, along the way. So you've only got, say, six shims in a stack. Well, you can only affect it six different ways, essentially, in, in that shim stack. But by having, say, 20 shims, then it opens up a world of possibilities. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's not something that someone can easily adjust on their vehicle. That's more in your development stage of getting it fine-tuned, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's all in, inside the shock. So that's something that with our products, um, because we build all our products ourselves to order in Brisbane, we can revalve our own products again we can pull them back apart change the valving we can go from a you know comfort set of shocks revalve them change some springs as well but the valving sort of like the, the big key part of it change the valving right to you know through to make it like a circuit racing setup or something like that so sometimes that uh, our customers find that quite handy as as the use for their car evolves over time maybe it started off as a daily but it ends up being a track car and with our shocks you don't have to go and you know sell those ones and buy new ones you can actually just keep the same set of shocks and we can revalve and change springs and the shocks can evolve as the car use does. I'm assu assuming that's uh, quite a common thing with people changing uh, spring rates that it needs to be revalved to match that spring rate if you get too far outside a window. Yeah, that's right. I try and make the valving pretty versatile so you can change the spring rate a decent amount without having to worry about revalving because I want people to play with their, with their shocks and make changes and, and, and learn from that and also just help improve the car for themselves and that sort of thing. So that I try and yeah allow a, 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 at least a few kilos of spring rate change before that sort of thing would be needed. And I usually sort of say to people, look, springs are easy to change and a lot cheaper to change as well. The shocks don't have to come back to us to do that. Any sort of you know, mechanically capable person can do that. And they're a lot cheaper, like we only charge 50 bucks a spring and that sort of stuff. So it's a lot cheaper to do it that way, whereas a revalve might be more like 350 a corner. I, I usually say to my customers, look, just keep trying uh, springs until you, you know, 
you sort of find a bit of an issue where like maybe you run out of damper adjustment, you're at full hard and you need to be stiff or that sort of stuff, then, you know, we can look at some revalving that sort of thing. But usually I say just stick with springs to start with because that's the easiest sort of path. And then once you feel like you've reached the limit of that, then we'll, you know, then we can look at valving. But it's pretty rare that we need to do that sort of stuff, but I like to let people know that it's there as an option. And here at MCA, you have some different options uh, based on the application. So you have a, a drift specific coilover, drag one, comfort and some circuit racing stuff as well. How would the valving compare between those? If we just say to compare two for starters, so maybe the drift and the drag one. So with drifting, generally speaking, you're looking at like relatively high speed, say 100k an hour over sort of stuff. And you're looking at, you know, throwing the car around left to right, transitioning between corners and that sort of thing. So um, with that, you want stability. Uh, you want confidence uh, for the driver and you want the car to be nice and stable and easy to do those transitions. You don't want it sort of flicking, like rocking and rolling between the, the between the transitions. You need some firmer spring rates for that to help keep the car stable, but you also need the, the dampening of the shocks, mainly in the rebound area, to be up to the task as well. So that the uh, the shocks aren't sort of shooting the car upwards when the, when the weight comes off that corner suddenly. So yeah, yeah, so more rebound um, is, is usually a characteristic of a, of a drift specific sort of setup as well as the firmer springs. And usually I also soften the bump off a little bit on a drift setup as well, just because I find the stiffer springs are already resisting compression a fair bit because they're because they're on the stiffer side. Um, and so more bump uh, than you need tends to sort of uh, make the whole thing a bit too rigid and you start to lose traction and drive and that sort of stuff. So, so ultimately uh, feel is one side of the equation, but the performance um, controlling the tyre contact patch and, and the resulting grip, the valving has a significant impact on both? Yeah, absolutely. Valving to me is sort of like the king of it all. It's probably like 70% of it. Yeah, just from a comfort set of shocks right through to a race set, you know, it might only change a few kilos in spring rate, but the valving will change drastically. If anyone wants to follow along with your products and what you guys are doing, where can they find that information? Yeah, probably on our website, just mcasuspension.com. If you have some questions and things like that, just flick us an email. We've got a good contact form on our website. We've also got a really helpful little guide that um, asks some questions and then you sort of answer them and, and it suggests one of our products and things like that as well we find that's really accurate yeah just mcasuspension.com or anything not on there that you want to know about um, just flick us an email hey, thank you very much sure thank you